All right, welcome again, everyone, uh, to our uh, ATD OER degree community meeting, uh, winter 2019. This is Una Daly from the Community College Consortium for OER. And Happy New Year, everyone. Hope you had great holidays. <laughs> I know it seems like a long time ago now, right? Um, and I hope you're all staying warm back, back east there and in the Midwest. I know you're having some pretty cold weather. Um, it's in the 60s here today, so we're, we're pretty lucky. All righty. Okay. Everyone can hear me okay, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, snowy upstate New York. Yeah, I'm sure you're getting that. Let me just start my slides here. <laughs> all right. Ah, I think you know all these characters. And uh, welcome to everyone. Um, you know, we have, I think we're going to have a fairly quick meeting today. Um, we're going to go through um, some updates uh, in general and then um, the uh, OER degree calendar. And Fran is going to tell us about the final report template. Um, and um, we're going to have, you know, we'll go through our usual um, kind of calendar events. And then we have some time to talk about uh, lessons learned and future plans. And so I hope, uh, I hope uh, you thought a little bit about that. Um, or if you haven't, I hope you'll think about it now. All right. Uh, I don't know if uh, any of you caught the Babson report um, that came out just a couple weeks ago. Um, they've been uh, looking at OER usage in general um, at colleges and universities over the last, I'm going to say about the last four or five years. Um, and um, it's up. Uh, the numbers are up. We're, you know, as, as we used to say, <laughs> I used to say it when I was in business, it was up and to the right. So we continue to grow OER. Um, it, it, it's six percent over last year uh, with their review um, and awareness has grown I think to over 50 percent or very close to 50 percent of faculty are aware of OER. So these are it's all really good news. Um, I think one of the things I found surprising uh, was that faculty now, 40% say they prefer digital instructional materials over paper materials. Was anyone else surprised about that? I'm a little surprised by that. Is that, is that Peter? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Now I see you up there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, this is, I think, actually really good news. Um, and um, so it's, but it was a little surprising to see that jump. So, um, and I think it is going to make the use of OER easier. And then, um, in, in terms of faculty, uh, I'm sorry, in terms of um, faculty and department chairs, um, there, is, there is a real heightened awareness now about the textbook cost. And um, I think in the community colleges, we've been a little bit ahead of the four-year colleges. Um, yeah. Um, and, you know, this, was, this is just uh, another little piece of information from CUNY, and I see Gina Amaral's on, so I don't know if she wants to speak to this, but that initial $4 million that CUNY received um, last year, so that was the first allocation, has already yielded $9.5 million, so it's more than twice the investment, uh, return on investment. Uh, Jean, did you want to share anything about that? No, only that we feel really fortunate um, that we were in the right place at the right time to receive that support and that we've had it two years running. Um, and so we're in the middle of the second year and things are going well. And it did allow, we only had probably four or five campuses participating in OER before that money came through and now we have all 24. Um, so it is really exciting what an infusion of money like that can actually do, um, certainly for our system. Yeah, and I assume that, uh, you know, the governor and uh, the legislature, the state legislature has been pretty pleased with the return on investment. I certainly hope so. <laughs> and I do believe you're right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, wonderful. Um, and last, I just wanted to mention Open Education Week, and I'll go into a little bit more detail about that um, 
later on. Um, but that's coming up in March. So start uh, thinking about how you can use Open Education Week to promote OER. And I, I know so a, a lot of you on the call today have done exactly that in years past. And we do keep an archive um, of what people have done, the community colleges have done. If you go up to our website, you can search under news and uh, you can look at all the open ed week things from the last three or four years and all the really smart things people came up with to engage students and faculty. All right, I just wanted to open it up if we had any questions um, or um, support needs that people wanted to share at this time. Any kind of grant related things or All right, last time I asked this question, we had we had a few people who had uh, things. I take it that means everyone has gotten all their courses are uh, approved and running and um, running pretty well. <laughs> well, wonderful. Um, if we, I'm sorry, I'm trying to check, check the chat window here. Uh, yep, you made it, all right. <laughs> this is a fun back channel here. All right, so um, we will keep moving on then. And uh, I'm gonna turn this over to Fran to talk about uh, all the great stuff with uh, Achieving the Dream. Fran? Hello, thank you, Una. Um, so everybody should um, have received an email from SRI and RPK. This is the final data collection is underway right now. Um, so if you have any questions about that, feel free to go ahead and shoot them an email. Um, and they'll be able to get back to you. I know a couple of you had some issues with your um, research departments. So just um, um, let them know if you have any more problems. Uh, Dream is coming up. Um, we are, it, it's all hands on deck now. It's only a couple weeks away and um, everybody is busy making sure that it's the best 15th anniversary celebration ever. Um, so it's the 19th through the 22nd in Long Beach. I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, who among you is presenting at DREAM um, in just a second. Um, the very final report will be due March 29th. I extended the deadline um, mainly because I'm not ready, honestly. Um, and there's so much going on with the DREAM that I wanted to be able to give you all enough time too to work on it. So my goal is to get you the template um, hopefully the week after DREAM. So that's almost the last week in February. And then it'll be due on the 29th of March. Um, this one will be a lot more streamlined. I was gonna talk about this later in the slides, um, but we're not gonna ask you for as much detail as before because this is the final, final one. Um, a lot of you, or a few of you, have no cost extensions right now. So the financial um, budget form that you turned in, you don't need to turn that again, turn that in again. Um, so if you did that already, you're good to go. So it's mainly just going to be some narrative um, and summary of your experience. So I'll talk about that again in a second. Um, we mentioned on the last one of these calls that we are instituting our first ever teaching and learning institute. So we're excited about that. There are going to be three tracks to that. Uh, one is OER, one is culturally responsive teaching, and the other is a guided pathways focus. Um, all all of them are sort of gonna be braided together is what we're saying around here. Um, so they all will be intertwined and you'll have, you'll see common pieces and threads amongst each one of the tracks. Uh, that's gonna be May 30th through June 1st and it's in Minneapolis, right down the street from Paisley Park for anybody who wants to um, make it a vacation trip too. Um, so we're excited about that. The website should be going up pretty soon um, and then you'll, people will be able to get more information about the agenda and to register. Um, and then lastly, in September is when things wrap all the way up and we'll have the final research report from SRI and RPK group um, that will go out um, to you. So as soon as we get it, we'll take a couple of weeks to proof it, turn it around back to you all so that you'll get the final PDF version so you can share internally with your, your team. Next slide. Uh, we still are collecting artifacts from you. So if you have any 
uh, communication plans, any flyers, um, any professional development materials that you've used, please go ahead and upload those to the artifacts section. Um, we want to be able to share those out later once we get the sharing site up. And one thing that I didn't mention, that I didn't put in slides, is that we are exploring how we're gonna house all these courses and where they're gonna live. Um, we are, we're very close to making a decision about um, what that's gonna look like. So as soon as we figure that out, we will let you know so that there will be a uh, final grant repository of all the courses so everybody can get all of the information that they put all their hard work into. Uh, you'll be able to see it all in one place. And we're hoping that the artifacts can either live in an online community, maybe Canvas, or wherever we put the courses also in that one repository. Uh, great. Yeah. Uh, there, there, just before we go to the next sure. I you had a question here from Tanja Connerly. Oh, sure. She said, in the month of September, will the report need any information from grantees, or will the grantees just be receiving the report? So in September, you will just be receiving the final data report. So that's the one that SRI and RPK group put together for us, for ATD. Um, so all the data they're collecting this month and then all the, the two reports that they wrote previously, 2017 and 2018, it'll be one um, summation of all of that in the full grant and the data that they have. So we don't need anything from you in September. The last time we're gonna ask uh, you all to send us stuff will be March 29th. Any more questions? Let's yes, see. Peter, what you're saying here. Let's see. This addition to web-based? Yes, okay, so yes, the repository will be in addition to um, the sort of library that Lumen has put together because the one that Lumen has put together does not contain all of the courses. Um, this one will contain every last course. Uh, so it's gonna be a huge endeavor uh, and we will um, figure out what all of the pieces are and what that means to you. Um, and we're trying to be able to get you all access for free. Like we're trying to still work out a lot of the pieces, but I did just wanna mention to you that it's coming and there will be a place where all of the courses live. So Joe, so no, if you, if you got a no cost extension um, to spend the rest of your money down by June 30th of this year, you do not need to submit another um, financial budget form again. Okay, great. Um, okay, so then uh, back to Dream. So there are a couple of things happening in a dream related to OER specifically. So there is a pre-conference workshop. Um, Richard is gonna be running that um, with somebody else, I can't remember right now, um, but it's titled The OER Experience. Um, and it's for people who really wanna learn more about OER and actually get their hands dirty and start creating some things. Um, so the pre-conference workshops are at an additional cost. Um, and this is just in the afternoon of Tuesday. So pre-cons are either in the morning or in the afternoon. So this one is in the afternoon. Um, so that will be something exciting and new if you're interested in paying extra <laughs> for that. Um, there is going to be a grantee panel. My order's off. There's going to be a grantee panel on Thursday. I've asked a few of you if you're interested in participating in the panel, which thank you for getting back to me. Um, I'm excited to see how this shapes up. We are going to um, primarily give a summation of everything that's happened in the grant and then the unique spins that your institutions have taken um, while instituting this whole project. Um, we know that this group from previous dreams, you know, it's primarily provosts and deans and some presidents. There are a few faculty members who attend, a few librarians, but we really want people to understand the impact to the college and how it can help the college um, save money, it can help the students save money, um, it can help institutional change occur, and it can help empower faculty. Um, so we're, I will be having a call with all of the people who agreed to be on the panel a little bit later um, this month, maybe even the first week of February, um, because it really is just going to be about telling your story, um, things that have happened along the way of this whole initiative. Um, then we are having a teaching and learning 
teaching reception. So the OER work has sort of folded into our larger teaching and learning area here at ATD. So there will be a teaching and learning reception on Wednesday. So if you are at DREAM, you're absolutely invited to come to this. We would love to see you there. We will not be having an OER reception this year. So we're just having this one teaching and learning one. Next slide. Oh, great. Yeah. Oh, I just, you have a question? Um, I was looking to see if we have any questions. Um, I, I had looked at the OER workshop, the pre-conference workshop, and it looked uh, quite interesting. There's going to be some role playing uh, mm -hmm. students and uh, faculty uh, around OER. So um, it's a pretty creative uh, workshop. Yeah, that's Richard's, Richard's thinking. Yes. Okay, great. So then, yep, Joe, I'm coming to you next. So the next slide, okay. um, you know, talks about the grantee presentations. So we have a couple of other um, OER stuff happening at DREAM. Um, thank you for submitting your proposals for the people who did, who were on the call. Um, I want to apologize for the lag in notification that happened or didn't happen for some of you. Um, from what I understand, notifications went to some people's spams. Some of them didn't go out. It's an automated system. Um, so I apologize if you were not notified at all. Um, that was not me at all. That was our events area. But um, when you asked me, I would need to go check because I had no idea who was who submitted and, and when they were notified. Um, but on the bright side of that, a few of you were selected. So we are going to have a session with SRI. So it's going to be Richard and SI, SRI, and they're going to be talking about um, the data. So the last report um, and all of the cost data and the student survey data, that will be discussed as well as the first report. We will have copies of both reports available um, for people to take physically, as well as a one pager about the initiative that will be in each one of the conference bags. That's going to give just a snapshot of the initiative since it's ended um, and links to the reports online. Um, so Bay College is presenting on Wednesday, which we're excited about. Um, that's February 20th, and their title is Tell Me What You Really Think of Open Educational Resources. So Joe is going to be presenting. Joe, who are you presenting with? We're presenting with uh, Todd McCann, Jen McCann, who are both English faculty, Edie Erickson, who is a instructional designer, myself, the executive director of online learning, um, and we're also going to have some student videos. We, it's, it's pretty difficult to find students that are willing to, um, I don't know, they have busy schedules and yeah. from work, and so we're going to use some student videos. Okay, that's great. That's wonderful. Um, and now that you say that, I'm actually, did they ask you your AV needs at all? Um, a little bit, but okay. uh, I can like, you know, touch bases again and make sure that we have projector with sound and. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna make, I'm making a note of that because I need to let them know that you're gonna have videos and you're gonna need sound. Okay, <laughs> excuse me, okay. Um, so then um, CUNY will also be presenting uh, Thursday at 10. <clears throat> Uh, and their title is Without ATD, Where Would We Be? Scaling OER from Early Opportunities at CUNY. Um, so um, I believe that that session is gonna have a ton of folks on it as well. Um, one thing we tried to do was stagger these. Um, originally, these were all on the exact same day, which wasn't gonna work. Um, so we wanted to make sure we spread them out so people had a chance to go to um, a ton of different options about OER. Um, there is gonna be one Dream Scholar for the people who attended Dream in the past. Uh, one Dream Scholar who is a proponent of OER. He's a strong advocate of it. He encourages people wherever he goes. Kian Trong, um, he was a Dream Scholar last year and he will be back this year. So if anybody wants a student testimonial, let me know. Um, he went to school in Portland, um, but he would be willing to talk about OER to anybody, for anybody. Um, okay, next slide. Ready? So um, again, about the final report. So like I said before, this one is gonna be a lot shorter. Um, so there's not gonna be much need to stress and I'm not gonna ask you to pull a ton of things. Um, I'm not going to ask 
ask you to pull student impact, um, unless you have it and you want to share it. Um, probably going to get a faculty uh, summation. We really only need one this time. I don't want to have you all sort of scrambling um, to find things at the last minute. So it's going to really be a summary of the entire initiative, your take on it, your successes, your challenges as before, um, but thinking about the entire time. Um, and then really the impact that it's had on your college or your department um, and your faculty and your students if you have that. So it will be way shorter. It probably will be in an online version again. Uh, we are not going to give the logins and passwords this time. Uh, we learned our lesson that that was trickier than we needed it to be. Um, but we will have an online system for you to upload things. Are there any questions about that? Nope. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Fran. Sure. All right. Well, I did want to mention that um, we um, are still open for case studies. Um, I know there's a couple that are in the pipe. Um, and so if you haven't sent one our way, do consider that. Uh, all the information is down there. We have 14 up here and um, the last three or four just came up in within the last four months. So uh, we published Housatonics um, just a few weeks ago, uh, Lake Washington uh, Institute of Technology, uh, CUNY's was in, um, I think October. And uh, then Santa Ana College was just as we were entering the fall semester. So, um, they're great, uh, full of great information, uh, lessons learned, and uh, uh, it plans for the future as well. So um, I want to segue here a little bit. Oops, I'm sorry. I had I wanted to mention to you that um, we still are maintaining uh, that list of conferences, and that link is at the top of the page. But uh, there's still quite a few conferences. The spring ones, of course. Uh, I would say are almost all closed with the exception of um, uh, open ed week, which is open till the end of February. Uh, and that's, that's actually taking place in March. And then the Cascadia open education summit, that one is taking place in April. And I think submissions are due tomorrow. So one more day, if you want to, if you wanted to present there and then the NISOD uh, national Institute for staff and organizational development in Austin, Texas um, also is um, open uh, for submissions through tomorrow. Um, but uh, many of these are great um, conferences for going for attending, um, and, and and I hope a lot of you are presenting at these. All right, Peter, you asked about the case studies are updated. Um, you know, we'd be happy to um, to um, to help you update them. So you would have to send us uh, the um, updates that you wanted, and we'd be happy to make those changes. Yeah. So we we're happy to, oh, thanks for sharing that, Sam. Um, Montgomery College is presenting at the Chair Academy in March. I'm not sure we have that one on here, the Chair Academy. Hmm. Maybe you could put a link into the, uh, into the chat window, Sam, so that uh, we could put that on our list as well. Um, and yes, Quill, uh, the Cascadia one submission deadline is tomorrow unless they've changed that recently, but um, that's what it was. Um, all right. Um, Open Education Week. So um, this is uh, the global celebration worldwide. Um, I don't think this is news to anyone. I think probably all of you have heard about it before and um, may, maybe even um, have presented or participated. Um, we hope that uh, you will do that. Um, submissions are open um, and there is promotional materials there um, on that website so you can download those and, um, and edit them. The posters are more, more easily editable this year so that you can add information if you're, if you're holding events on your campus this year. And um, so it helps with all that graphic design kind of piece. Uh, those will be ready for you. Um, and um, 
we, you know, we love to uh, share the information from community colleges, um, what community colleges do each year. So keep that in mind. Uh, we'll be, of course, using the Open Ed Week calendar, which is why you sh it's great to submit them. Um, because that exposes, we'll do national exposure for you. And of course, the Open Ed Week site does international exposure for your programs. And um, let me see. And finally, there are some really great events that will be going on. And um, it can be very useful to share those with people at your campus, um, those online events um, during that week um, happening all over the world. And I think it really can be exciting for people to see that this is not just a US, it's not just a, you know, North American, it's, it's really happening everywhere. Any questions about Open Ed Week? Anyone want to share what they did last year? Um, I, don't, I think my, um, our, our support specialist is on. Liz, do you want to share the link in the chat window to what, uh, to that uh, review that you did? So we, it's, it's posted on our website. Uh, Liz Yada, uh, my assistant, uh, does a lot of um, work around Open Ed Week. And, and last year, she um, archived um, all of the, all of the uh, materials that you sent to her or that we picked up. OK, she'll, she'll get that out there in a few minutes. All right. Um, I just wanted to mention that the CCCOER Spring Webinar Series will start soon, in fact. Um, you can go to that link um, at the bottom of the page. If you haven't received it already, you probably did receive it in your email. Um, our next webinar is uh, this coming Wednesday, January 30th. Um, and we'll have two faculty who have recently adopted OER and will tell us about their work in art history and US history. So um, I, we really wanted to focus on um, faculty who are relatively new to OER uh, so that they could report on the challenges and, um, it, and, and successes, uh, you know, unanticipated benefits and challenges. So um, if you have faculty who are thinking about OER, um, maybe aren't very experienced, this might be um, a great time for them to um, listen in. Uh, you, you know, they're recorded as well if, it, if the time doesn't work. We've also changed our time this year. So we're starting at noon Pacific um, and 3 p.m. Eastern. And I, I'm sorry, it's getting a little late in the day for Eastern, but it turns out that um, we have the Hawaiian colleges are participating with us now. And so they're two hours behind us. So um, we ended up um, changing it so that we could include them in the in uh, the webinars at a, at a reasonable hour so um, and um, we'll we'll have a series of faculty OER di dialogues going on in March um, for the open ed week that that, that will be CCC OER's work uh, this year um, and we'll have some other interesting topics dual enrollment is becoming a bigger and bigger issue and so we'll be talking about um, how OER can play a part in that um, and and in um, May, we, of course, we'll be talking about OER and ZTZ degrees. So we'll be looking to you folks to help us with that webinar. And the final one is on regional models for OER implementation. And a lot of regions around the country are getting together to do planning, uh, which is really exciting around open educational resources, uh, particularly in higher ed, but K through 12 as well. So it's, yeah, it's, it's becoming more mainstream. So now I want to give you an opportunity to talk, um, and <laughs> Fran and I can listen. Um, and um, since this is our last community meeting um, for, for this grant period, um, I wanted to invite you to share uh, lessons learned in future thinking. And um, so what you're thinking about for the future. And um, I actually put a Google Doc together here. And let me see if I could type that in here. Um, and if you would like to share that, um, or you can speak up, what, what, whatever you prefer. Um, and I, I'm just going to, while you're thinking about that, I put the bit.ly uh, link in the um, chat window there. And I'm inviting you to type in something, if you'd like to, or to speak up. Um, and I'm just going to start it out with uh, 
with a little uh, blurb from Lake Washington Technical. Um, Sally he Heilstead, who I think uh, most of you know, um, she was unable to attend today. She has an all day meeting. And so I said, well, yo, that's, that's a bummer. Um, would you mind if I shared uh, the information from your case study? So these, these, are, these are public, they're on the CCCOER website. And she said, oh no, that would be great. And so her lessons learned, uh, I think probably uh, resonate with many of you. Uh, they learned pretty early on in the process that they needed a core team together. They, at one point they had like a single person in charge of it and it, and and that person I think either moved on or, or decided they didn't want the responsibility. And so they put together this core team um, to uh, make sure that the right people were in the room when decisions had to be made and um, also to help each other with solving problems. And another lesson learned was that in some case, some disciplines, there just isn't the OER available. And so um, they started looking at low cost and no cost options for um, other departments that wanted to adopt, um, or sorry, wanted to um, be part of the process, although they couldn't be, you know, strictly OER. Workforce Ed was the one she mentioned, but I think all of you um, know of other departments at your college that also had that. And then uh, the future direction that she shared with us was, um, as they're encouraging students and faculty to engage in OER, um, they've shifted a focus now to open pedagogy and how students can be really involved in the process um, away from just strictly uh, OER use. So that was uh, that was um, the the view from Lake Washington. Um, does anyone else want to share at this time um, their thoughts? This is Jean from um, BMCC. I would second um, everything from Lake Washington. <laughs> so um, we certainly have found that ZTC is much more viable. Um, even when there are good OER available, our faculty just find it a much richer pedagogical choice to be able to use videos from the library, from Canopy, um, scholarly articles also from the library and other materials, or maybe an ebook or an ebook chapter and some things from fair use. So our faculty are definitely um, uh, committed to OER and want to engage with it, but our, their courses are ZTC. I'm not sure we have a single course that's um, OER, except for the ones we did for the grant, but of course, now that we're moving on from the grant, those folks are incorporating these other um, resources at this point. Um, they were happy to do it for the grant and see what it was like, but they are feeling that it's a, a richer pedagogical choice to use the no cost. Um, and we have shifted to open pedagogy as well, and we're having great success. It's really energizing for both our students um, and our faculty. We're also looking for sustainability. There's two things. Um, we're looking, we're creating course hubs, so WordPress sites, um, which have a menu of options for faculty, so new adjuncts or new faculty coming in to, can go to this course hub um, and choose their materials um, from this ZTC selection. And we were hoping that will sustain and increase um, the number of folks teaching ZTC courses. And then we also need to have a discussion about tenure because um, we do believe, still believe that that's gonna be the most viable way for sustainability is if uh, the inst systemically, institutionally, we value OER in the tenure and promotion process, faculty will be able to make the choice to spend their time there rather than choosing to spend it on other things that have been valued in the past, um, that it's a viable choice for them to make to commit to spending some time in that area. So those are some of the things we've learned and are thinking about. Great. Yeah, th thank you for sharing that. Um, does anyone have questions for Jean about that? Jean, I was fascinated by the course hub idea. So is that so it's um, for a specific course, there would be a hub of resources. So essentially uh, an array of resources that a faculty could choose from, uh, you know, combine, you know, or use individually. Is, is that the idea? Yeah, exactly. We're doing two things. One is course up and one is a course template. And the template is sort of the exact course. Here's um, the material. There aren't choices. There are just 
it's actually the template that you could incorporate. But the course hubs have more choices. So it's like, here's a sample slide deck, and obviously people are welcome to adapt that. And here are the essential ones, but here's also another menu. So if you want to add other things, um, you know, here's our recommended sort of essential list, but we've got some other resources that we found valuable. And so it's basically a sampling of what different faculty in that course have taught with. Um, so our faculty are very <laughs> independent um, in some disciplines more than others. Um, so uh, we have uh, faculty teaching um, with a couple of overlaps, but then also a variety of materials. So we want to give the sense for somebody coming and teaching speech 100 or sociology 100 of the different choices that are being made by different faculty in the department. Um, so yes, it's a space where they can see um, options, hopefully not too many, because we know that can, uh, it can be hard to choose sometimes, but um, enough options that they get a sense of the richness of the material available and that they can start with and then make it their own and we can add their resources as suggestions as well. Um, so it is a hub that they can go to um, to put together their course uh, with these materials that their colleagues are already, already using. Well, that's great. Wow, sounds, sounds like a great model to, um, to share with others, yeah. Um, let's see, all right. Um, I'm going to take one out of the um, out of the file out of the Google Doc, and I know Tanja has uh, put put one into the chat window as well. Um, and then we'll take another um, verbal one if if you like. So Bill Peltz from Herkimer Herk Herkimer, sorry Herkimer College, SUNY, uh, shared. Uh, Bill, do you have a microphone? Would you like to speak to your um, your comment under lessons learned? Okay, Bill doesn't have a microphone, so I'm going to read it, Bill, and I hope I, I hope I do this correctly. You said uh, an interesting variable that potentially contaminates the main effect that OER adoption has on course selection, course section selection, student retention and completion. Instruction, instructors who are considered hard, in quotes, because they demand a lot from students and are also strong advocates of OER, don't have the same appeal to students that instructors who are easy yet use publisher courses. Okay, interesting. So um, it looks like an um, OER in and of itself isn't the only variable that students look at when selecting courses. <laughs> they also look for easy graders. That is that correct, Bill? Did I did I capture? Stay there. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, Tanja shared, um, and I, I'm going to say, Tanja, do you have a microphone, or do you want to uh, speak, or do you want me to say it? Your comment. Yes, we are getting some interesting microphone feedback. So Tanja said, depending on the size of the college, to have a full-time OER coordinator position so that OER can be marketed properly, and this position should be extended to all types of affordable learning materials. Um, great. And I know, uh, Tanja, you've been able to do that at San Jacinto, is to actually get an OER coordinator position. So that's wonderful. And then the future direction is to continuing promoting OER at our college, as well as our partner high schools. Yes, uh, it's definitely, um, yeah, the high schools are becoming um, a big part of this as well. Um, I saw somebody turned on their microphone. I think they wanted to speak. Um, would you like to try that again? I think that was you, Cheryl. Did you want to say something? Yeah, I was, sorry, I, I prematurely unmuted. <laughs> Go uh, ahead. You, you have a little bit, there's a little bit of feedback, but go ahead. Oh, it's sorry, fine. not this mic. Um, yeah, I just wanted to say in terms of uh, lessons learned that we figured out, even though we were completely obsessed with OER development, the rest of the college somehow kept going on with their other stuff. And so we had to become sort of stealth. And uh, we developed a new QEP and had our sex uh, review during this year process that we were active in OER um, 
So we had to figure out how to kind of inculcate OER into some of the other initiatives that were already going on, because as much as we were so devoted to the idea, other people had lots of other ideas they were devoted to and didn't really know what we were getting at. And so we did have to um, just kind of, you know, make sure that OER got got considered as part of each of these initiatives and the new QEP that we have, which is on problem-based learning and critical thinking. So it's perfect for OER and OER pedagogy. But I, I realized if you don't pay attention, it doesn't get it doesn't get picked up. That's all really. Great. And so um, the two initiatives that you mentioned were project based learning and critical thinking was um, trying to introduce OER into those initiatives was a way to um, get um, broader appeal. Right. Our, you know, our grant is ending, but the QEP is just beginning. And so we didn't want everybody to sort of turn away from what we were doing in OER and just worry about problem based learning and miss the fact that this can all, you know, this can all come together. And be together so it's pretty exciting yeah and sure what is qep sorry oh i'm sorry um the sax uh the sax coc is our accrediting body and you have to pledge to create a five-year quality enhancement plan so qep stands for quality enhancement. right i i thought the it whole did. institution has to be involved it can't just be faculty it can't just be you know throwing money at something it's usually uh, a very carefully crafted plan to improve something significantly over a five-year period. And so we're developing problem-based learning um, as an institution with that. So it's, um, it's really a natural for OER. It's just getting other people to see that and understand it. Because people are at different levels of understanding OER anyway across the institution. Great. And so you're, you're hoping to integrate OER into the QEP? Yes. Part of the QEP, uh, the good news is, we, the bad news is we will never, I doubt we'll ever have an OER coordinator, which would be wonderful, but it's not going to happen. Um, but we have a new um, director of our Center for Teaching Excellence, which we didn't have before. It's a new position funded by the QEP budget. Um, and so we're hustling really fast to get her up to date on what we've been doing on OER. She comes from a four-year school that didn't have a lot of OER efforts. So, um, so that's been the good news. Great. Yeah. Great. Thank you, Cheryl. And um, we've had a couple more um, come in in the chat window. And I, I see, I, I know Quill, you also had something to say. Do you, Quill, I think you, yours came in earlier. Do you want to jump in first? Oh, I was just um, jumping kind of on, and I think a couple of other people have pointed it out, how very true it is that the rest of the college kind of keeps going. Um, and this seems like the most important thing to you, but it's not always the most important thing to everybody else. Um, so finding ways to mix it in is really, really, really important. Great. And it looks like, Quill, also you said you're going to be targeting dual enrollment. and and something else. Yeah, so for us, for my institution, dual enrollment is our highest growing enrollment college-wide right now. So to focus on enrollment needs, we're gonna go that way. Um, but career and technical education is also really, really important to us. Um, and it's one of the places where it's harder for us to develop OER because it's like, you know, a lot of it is from scratch or <laughs> finding new ways to think about teaching material. Um, and so that can be really challenging for my college to do because, you know, they've got a million other things going on and faculty don't want to write new materials. So we're targeting that, but we're going to do dual enrollment first just because that's where our enrollment is. Great. And thanks, Cheryl, for Cheryl has put uh, Reynolds Community College in Virginia has gone completely OER for their dual enrollment courses. That's really super. All right, let's see. I'm going to back up. I think the next person was uh, Janice. Janice, do you want to speak up? Do you have a microphone? I do. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh huh. Okay. No, I just mentioned a few things that came to mind. Um, you know, with the courses we created. 
uh, during the grant, we're now, you know, realizing we need to come back to those courses and continue to keep them relevant and enhance them even more. Because back, you know, when we first created them, our, our focus was largely on what is OER? How do we get it in the course? How do we make it look good? So now we're going back to those courses and really enhancing them um, with assignments that incorporate open pedagogy and active learning strategies um, to make them better. And then we're also lucky enough that we're able to offer an OER course award to our faculty uh, to continue the development of OER courses across the curriculum each each year. So that's happening here. So is that is that a stipend or is that like an actual excellence award that's that's um, given to fa or that's awarded? It's a stipend um, that is awarded to a faculty member who's basically their cho their course is chosen by the division as being the next one that should be targeted for online course OER development. Okay. <laughs> so it's a little bit of a double-edged sword there, but uh, sounds good. Well, the faculty volunteer to do it. It's not like they're being forced. Um, okay. And they are paid well, so. Okay. <laughs> Says you're awarded to do it. <laughs> yeah, they apply for the award to do it. Yeah. Oh, they do. Okay. Wonderful. Yeah. And I was. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to give you a bad time. I think that's. I think that's great. Uh, all right, Pete. You had something here to say. Do you want to uh, speak to that? No. Shocking, huh? That I had something to say. Yeah, I'm shocked. <laughs> thoroughly. <laughs> Uh, I, I mean, some of some of these points are, are are great. I mean, some of the things that made our um, uh, our application for this award so specific to our online division, the strengths of the online division, and what we were going to be doing from that perspective, just highlights the 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 weaknesses in trying to bridge that into the hybrid and face to face world. So. I mean, our next challenge now, and and continues to be our challenge, is to try to, to to get the rest of the institution to look at this in the way that we're looking at it. Um, I mean, I'm 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 hopeful that uh, some sort of mini grants, in the same way that was just mentioned, to you know maybe get a group of faculty who are teaching either just traditionally face to face or have not adopted our our online materials to uh, you know to pay them as a team to make things a lot more robust for the classroom uh, and then maybe we could get widespread adoption that way you know target some of those those same courses it's the ones that we're using for dual enrollment now that just occurred in the fall uh, that added almost 60 sections to our uh, you know, to 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 what we've been doing, uh, and they're using the online materials in the in, in the high schools for that. So, I mean, anything that we can do to try to get more people to work together in a team, and then spread that amongst face to face and 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 hybrid teaching, I think that's that that that's our next focus. In addition to just tackling other degree plans. Great. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad to hear someone else, uh, someone mentioned other degree plans as well. Um, yeah, great. Thank you, Pete. Um, Cheryl Lee, um, you had some uh, insightful information here for us as well. Hello, <clears throat> hello, everyone. Let me scroll up and see what I said. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see here. Um, you know, for sustainability, I I agree so much with with everyone. Uh, for us personally, here at Santa Ana. We have been having a really hard time with our bookstore, who's independent, and they're really great supporters, but in getting, in polling faculty to see what they're using the next semester to find out if they're using OER or not, it's so much of a manual work for our office to poll all the faculty and find out, are you using OER again or not? It would be great to get OER into the regular process of, you know, bookstore requests. So, we're still working on that, but in terms of regular processes at the college, um, dual enrollment is great, Quill, and we're starting to do that as well. But it should be, um, it should be something that's on everyone's thoughts as they go through any of their committees. You know, curriculum. When we talk about accessibility, 
um, it should be considered in all of these areas. So I think that for us, in addition to, I'd love to get an OER coordinator because there's so much involved as we all know, and nobody else seems to realize this, but there's so much that's involved in OER in terms of uh, coordination and then the maintenance of materials that um, I think that th for us, that'll really help with sustainability. So I echo everyone's thoughts in, in that as well. I don't, I don't know if I added anything more to that other than to express my frustration with it not being part of our regular bookstore ordering process to find out what faculty are, are using. But our bookstore tells us that faculty doesn't usually fill out their forms for regular textbooks anyway. So we seem to be ignoring the process at our college. Shirley, I so want to second that. Um, I, I, I think, and you know, I am an OER coordinator, basically, but <laughs> I think, uh, along with several other hats, but I think um, overall, it, it actually moving OER into like a scheduling process at my institution, which is very, very slow going. But it's one of the things that I want to have happen so that it's not like, oh, this happens at a, um, at a, a different institution like this happens because it's special and it's OER rather than like this happens because it's what we do at our institution and so yeah you should report that and it should go into the schedule and we should know before you even think about selecting your textbooks that you've already decided to go OER um, that is the dream world that I want to live in <laughs> right exactly exactly it shouldn't just be oh there's quill calling again i better include this or something it should be everything should be part of the regular process yeah I agree. or even worse oh quill wants the old book list so she can go through it and figure out who didn't turn <laughs> in a book so she can ask them if they talk with OER, <laughs> which is our process <laughs> oh good thank you i'm not alone <laughs> That, that's all I've got, Una. Great, thank you, Shirley. And you know, um, Peter had a, had a comment here about build, building in to your, uh, he's building it into the scheduling worksheets, uh, whether there's an OER or no textbook um, purchase required for students. Uh, one thing uh, years ago, um, and uh, at Anne Arundel, uh, they actually changed the adoption uh, form the template that faculty are supposed to submit to the bookstore and many don't of course but by a certain deadline right and they they actually put oer in that in that adoption form so that faculty could specify a link to a free uh resource or uh and maybe there was a room for a comment so I don't know if that's at all helpful, but um, they made it part of the process so that it wasn't an exception that um, faculty had to had to take care of, or yourself as the coordinator had to had to take care of. Well, um, not seeing uh, too many other comments right now, and I, I people I, I suspect are are perhaps some, some people have to dash off. I. Um, I think, can you still see my screen here? <laughs> I'm having trouble seeing my screen because I switched out of uh, the slides. Um, we can still see it. You can still see it. Uh, and do you see something called futures? Whoops. Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't. <laughs> We're still looking at a great picture of Sally. Yeah, not right. Well, that's always good. Um, hmm. <laughs> That's interesting. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I see where I am. Um, so here's just another set of lessons learned. What I did was I looked at the case studies um, that have been submitted in the last four months, and I mentioned the four of them, and here were some uh, great other lessons learned um, from other folks. And actually, I think most of these have been covered. Um, Tenure and promotion is, is mentioned here, building a working relationship with your bookstore for low cost printing, providing library support to faculty, um, outreach, outreach to students um, can be difficult. I think you've seen many of these before, um, but do read those case studies. They, they have some really great information in them. And then a futures that I also pulled out were um, how uh, prioritizing growing OER department by department. I think 
some of our colleges have found that maybe the OER degree isn't the exact fit for them. And so they're looking at other ways of approaching that. I don't know if anyone wants to address that. Um, and um, another comment was making sure that these pathways are not very, very thin so that there's more than one section of OER course being offered, you know, for a specific course being offered each semester. Um, otherwise, it's not really realistic to expect students to um, follow the entire pathway. And then, you know, the, the, this will be the last data collection uh, is happening in February, but um, for future purposes, um, you're gonna wanna continue to measure your outcomes. And so somebody mentioned all the wonderful outcomes. So looking at withdrawals, drop rates, and persistence, um, continuing to do that um, as you um, seek additional funding for, you know, new, new, pro new projects around um, OER and, um, and pathways. So I wanna say thank you for joining us. If there aren't any more questions, I think we'll um, let everybody uh, take off for their afternoon. And thanks for joining us.